So we want, yeah, we're going to take, if we draw this out to get a visual of what's happening, we're not going to just subtract the areas, we're going to subtract the actual volumes. So here, here's a picture. Here's our picture. If we draw y equals sine x in red from 0, we'll, we'll just keep it going, but we're only looking, this of course would be pi over 2 here, we're looking only up to pi over 4. And if we rotated the sine graph, that would be this. Okay. I'm going to color it in. Since this one is red, I'm going to color it in in red. This part, that circle there. And perfect. That looks pretty. I think that's my best coloring all day. So there we have our little cone. It's not really a volcano. Of our sine graph. Now we're going to draw our cos graph. The nice thing about sine and cos, I'll draw my cos graph in green. It starts at 1. And goes down like that. Both sine and cos are exactly the same at pi over 4, so that point is going to be in common. So we're going to have the same radius here for cos that we did for sine. So it's going to have this same circle. But if we go down to negative 1, it's going to look like this. And we'll draw a circle here. And you're going to imagine a bigger one in green. Okay, I'm going to just shade the bottom a second time here. It gets a little messy there. Can you see a dog bowl, a dog water bowl? Yeah, was your, what you were thinking of? turned on the side with a tiny hole so that all the water leaks out onto the floor. It's not, a, not the best design, but we're working on it. Okay? So it looks sort of like a dish, because you've got one part hollowed out and then the other part coming around. So what we could say, can you see that the red shaded part is completely within the green shaded part? So if we found the entire volume of the green, and the green would of course be y equals cos x, its volume, and then we subtracted the volume of the red, what we would be left with is a dog dish that's not quite functional because it has a hole in it. Yes? And magical donuts will appear. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take our green integral from 0 to pi over 4, have our pi out in front, and that is going to be cos squared x dx. And then we're going to find our volume of our red integral, subtract it. Our red integral also goes from 0 to pi over 4. We can have pi out in front, and now it's going to be sine squared x dx. We can factor out the pi. And I'm going to leave it there because we're going to talk about things for a little bit. Let's just start doing some mental math and integration stuff. Can you integrate cos squared easily? What is the integral? What is the integral of cos squared x dx? So we're thinking cos cubed x over 3, because you'd have to have that extra 3 there. Over 
over, over sine as well. And negative the whole thing. And we got a problem here, right? Do you see we have a chain rule? We, there's a chain rule in here because you've got cos inside of a squared function. And so if you were going to do integration with a function inside of a function, you might try substitution. But if we make u our cos x, because that's the function inside of a squared, then our du would be negative sine x, and we don't have that in our original function. And so we get, we get into a problem right now when we're trying to integrate this. In fact, we don't have anything right now as far as the, the skills that we've learned in calculus so far. We don't have anything to integrate cos squared x. So this is the point in the question where we give up, right? <laughs> End the video and hope no one watches this far. Hopefully they got turned off by the donut <laughs> so they're not watching anymore because we're stuck. So what happens when we're stuck and things aren't working? <laughs> we can ask the calculator. You, you can do that. You can, go to, you can go to Wolfram Alpha and you can type in integral of cos squared x and it will tell you what it's supposed to be, but that doesn't help you on an exam. Okay, this one still can be done. We can still do this one without our calculator. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, my initial thought of trying to integrate cos squared x dx doesn't work because I don't have the skills to do that yet. There's probably someone out there, and yes, there is, that knows how to do that, and that's great, but it's not me right now. So what else do I know? Well, we have some properties of integrals that say if you have an integral from 0 to pi over 4 and you're subtracting another integral from 0 to pi over 4, you could put those two together. And my zero. So then I would just get cos squared x minus sine squared x. And you say, Mr. JR, every time that we have integrals that are subtracting, what do we always do? We always do them separate anyway, so I don't see where this is going to help us. But then someone said identities. Do we have an identity where there's a cos squared x minus sine squared x? It's a cos 2x. Pretty. Don't know if that's going to help us, but we are stuck in our other things anyway, so we're going to try it. Can you integrate cos 2x? Yes. That we can do. It does have a chain rule in there, but it's just a constant function. 0 to pi over 4. It's going to be negative sine 2x, but with the chain rule, we would multiply by 2, so the opposite to compensate would be to divide by 2. Am I going the wrong way? No, it's just positive sine 2x, right? There we go. With sine and cos, I always do it, and then I work my way always from my derivatives and think of my graphs. So I always work from, if I have sine x, which looks like this, the derivative of sine x, my first slopes are positive, so the derivative of sine x is positive cos x. And then we can figure out this one needed to be positive as well. And then you need to know your unit circle, which you guys all have memorized before and know really well. You'll have to know it for your exam as well. Nope. To help you memorize it. So now if we plug in pi over 4, you get pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2. Well, that's an easy one. That's 1. So we get 1 over 2 minus, and sine of 0 is 0. We get pi over 2. So, and does it have any units? No units given, so it's just going to be units cubed. So you just made a dog dish that has a volume equivalent to half a pie. 